Wow, this is a nice setup. Are you kidding me? Welcome to Channel 7 News. Hello and welcome to Woodness Goodness. I'm your host Graham Jemby and today we are not going to be building my cabin. Instead, we are going to be asking the burning questions of the internet when it comes to cabin building. Now, as you may or may not know, I am not a professional. I am a semi-professional amateur. Right now, if you're unsure of if this is a YouTube channel in which you wish to spend your time. I'm here to tell you this is a great investment in both your future, your past, and your present. So if you do not know, we are actually currently building a cabin on my property. It is 244 square feet. It's 12 feet by 20 feet. I live on this property, it's in my woods, and it's incredible. During all the building process and you know comments here and there with different videos that I've put out, I've gotten a lot of questions, and a lot of them are repetitive questions and questions that I'm here to answer, but like I said, I am not a wizard or a scientist, but I do know physics. Basically, I'm creating this video for you guys, the guys and gals and girls and boys who are interested in starting a cabin and just don't really know where to start. So I'm here to help you start on the journey of mistakes, trials and tribulations, and possibly overcoming those and creating yourself a cabin that is in fact standing and not falling over. And by the way, if you guys are like, yo, nice haircut, and for those of you who are like, yo, not a nice haircut, well, I did it myself, okay? These are trying times, and as a DIYer, there's no time like the present to learn how to cut your, your flow. So first things first, you need somewhere to build this bad boy. You don't need 200 acres to build a cabin on. You could build it in the back of your half an acre lot inside the city. I mean, maybe you can't. That's another thing. You gotta make sure you're abiding by your county or city regulations. I'm a rule follower, but you know, just like stretching before or after a workout, we have to stretch and, you know, shimmy around those bylaws once in a while, just to make sure they're on their toes. After you have decided where you're gonna build your cabin. The most important part after that is to decide what kind of style you're gonna build. In my opinion, the style of the roof really determines the style of the cabin. Usually it's, it's the roof that kind of starts to give you that, I don't know, le chapeau or the hat of your cabin. And we all know a nice hat goes a long way. Let me tell you the style of roofs or the, the typical style of roofs or the most common style of roofs you can put on a cabin. And for those in the Midwest, we can call it a roof. Um, I'm from Canada originally and we just call it a roof. My apologies. I'm very sorry about that. The style of my cabin is, is, very, is like this. So we have a single pitch, single slope roof. This style of roof is known as a lean-to or a shed style roof, okay? Why did I pick this style? Well, because in my mind, it was easier because it was only, you know, basically one angle I had to worry about. I could build the square footage of my cabin as big or as small as I wanted to, and I would then just determine to go from the shortest length, which would be the width of my cabin, and slap on a single level roof which also gave me my big tall window wall and this math was just easier for me to figure out. This is the most common roof you will see in you know, North America. This is a gable style roof. So you have the two pitches, even though they're the same pitch, you know, 412 or 912 or what have you, but it has two sides of the roof, both meeting at the top and making a, you know, a peak of your roof, okay? This is 
a gable style roof. Your third style is a gambrel style. And this style would typically look like maybe a barn. It's kind of like half of a octagon, 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 or pentagon, or hexagon. Finally, you have a flat roof, which is flat. Okay, it's just a square, a box. You can have overhang and stuff like that, but generally it's a flat roof. And you're gonna see these in shipping containers, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously with something like that, you're gonna have to be worried or more concerned about how you're gonna get rid of that water as soon as it does, in fact, land on your roof. The next step is deciding what your roofing material is gonna be. Now, I really don't know if this is the order in which to do it, but these are the ways and kind of the order in which I think when I'm kind of planning or making out to build a cabin. Really, you've got three main styles, which is metal, wood, and asphalt. Again, there are some other ones in the mix, but those are the three main ones. Metal is what I did. You can get a bunch of different styles. You can get five feet crimp, you can get tough rib, standing seam, standing seam is a very nice looking roof. It's when the fasteners are not exposed, that's a great looking roof. Wood would be very similar to my siding, which would be kind of a cedar shake that you could do on your roof. And that would look very, very cool. And your typical, more traditional roofing, um, especially in North America, would be your asphalt shingle. Now we can look at foundation types. I am not about to go in depth into the foundation types. From most of the cabins that I've seen built and the, the foundations that I've seen most people do in terms of a smaller footprint structure is similar to the foundations that I've made, which are these piling foundations or kind of concrete cylinder foundations that you dig into the ground you know, a mix of rebar and concrete. And I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I did it correctly, but that is a very common style foundation because it's easy to do, especially on sloped land. Um, you don't have to clear a bunch of land and pour a pad. You know, your styling of the cabin can totally change throughout the build, but if you at least know your primary and most important structural kind of decisions, and those are made up front, that will help kind of shift and change your mindset to knowing exactly or sort of what your cabin's gonna end up becoming. And don't get me wrong, most of my decisions were made up on the fly, which is a reason why you know I had to kick myself on the butt a couple times with the mistakes I made, but now that I've built the cabin to the point where it's at, it's easier to talk about these things and know what I would do you know, next time. Insulation, okay, I just finished doing insulation in my cabin. My insulation's good, I'm happy with it, but I would have liked to kind of decide or had known the types of insulation I could have done and which ones were better for which types of, you know, parts of the cabin, whether it's the roof, the walls, the floor, and anyhow. So the most common and popular types of insulation are fiberglass bats, unfaced or faced, unfaced being it's just regular insulation, doesn't really have a front or back and the faced insulation has that craft paper and depending on where you are, that is definitely something you need because that's your moisture retarder. Now spray foam is kind of crazy because you definitely want to plan for it because as soon as you do apply spray foam, it's not like an insulation bat where you can just kind of take it out, you know, rewire an outlet if you didn't wire it correctly or, or you know, do stuff inside your wall. As soon as you spray that foam, it's it's solid stuff. It's it's solid foam when it when it hardens, which is which is great for insulating. Over the lifetime of your building, it might be the most cost efficient, but it certainly isn't as inexpensive as fiberglass bats. And as you can see in my little test subject, it expands and fills it up like crazy and becomes a hard to the touch insulation. Now your third most common used insulation is just a foam board. It's more efficient in terms of inches than the fiberglass insulation. One thing I did forget to mention is with your insulation bats, you can do the fiberglass, you can do rock wool, which is a rock based insulation. Also, you can get like sheep's wool and other products. After you've got those decisions and you're starting to build, it comes down to framing. I made some mistakes on my cabin that I could have avoided if I just done a little bit more research when it came to framing. And that was, you know, the foundation. You want to make sure that, you know, this thing is properly uh, anchored to your concrete pilings or your concrete foundation. 
I didn't know up front what to do, so I ended up doing some dry anchors, so hammer drilling some dry anchors into the concrete after the fact, which worked fine, but it would have saved me some time if I had just put the anchors in when I poured the concrete when it was wet. If you're wondering all things framing, this is called Graphic Guide to Frame Construction. I'm gonna have a link in the description below. This is just a great book. It explains all different kinds of scenarios of framing with great pictures. Oh, I love pictures because I'm not a big reader. But like I said, this is a great pickup if you wanna start framing on the right foot. Now that you're starting to frame, okay? You know, you're framing your floor, you're framing your walls. Uh, then you, you know, you build your roof, make sure you know what roof style you're doing, frame it correctly. And after that, you want to close in this bad boy sooner than later. And that means, you know, either you're putting up plywood or OSB, or maybe you have a product where you're putting up siding, like metal siding or something. Maybe you don't need sheathing. I, I don't know exactly, but here are some examples of what you could do on the siding. I did an OSB. Then I put my house wrap on it. House wraps are very important. It helps it maintain somewhat of an air tightness as well as if water was to get into the sides of your building, this protects everything on the inside from getting wet. So most of the time you need it all the time. So now that you have your cabin wrapped with whatever house wrap or you know protection kind of stuff you ended up getting, it's time to put siding on it. And maybe you don't put siding on yet, depending if, on if you gotta put windows in first, because sometimes windows should go in first, but we're not gonna talk about windows. When you're at the point where you're putting siding on, there's multiple options. You can do metal, okay? It's basically you take metal roof and you put it on vertically or sideways or what have you, and that can look really cool on a cabin. You can do cedar siding and shakes, or you can do the big, huge, long, 12 foot, 16 foot long lengths of that cedar siding that, you know, it overlaps and it, that stuff looks really great. You can stain it, paint it, leave it, whatever. It's cedar, it's really great. Uh, it's fun to work with because it's wood. It smells delicious when it rains. It's just incredible stuff. And as the French would say, incroyable. Another popular thing, especially nowadays and in residential, is hardy board, which kind of look like your, your wooden siding, your typical length wooden siding, but it's actually made of a cement byproduct, I think. So obviously everything we've been talking about are not the only things you should be thinking about. These are kind of the stylistic things that you should be considering when you're starting to dream up your cabin. And dreaming up your cabin is the funnest part of the relationship you're gonna have with your wood castle. Now the square footage is very important because depending on where you live, they're either gonna let you build it on your own without a permit or with a special permit. Basically, I got a permit saying, hey, I'm building a structure. It's less than 250 square feet, which is okay in my county. And so I could do it myself, but because I added electric, I had to get an inspection. So make sure you know what your county regulations are, because if you're trying to do this on your own and you don't want to go through the rigmarole of trying to find different permits and an architect to build this thing for you or plan it out or what have you, then you know, you're know you probably gonna wanna make sure you're under that square footage of the county or city allowance um, to be able to do it yourself. And finally, another thing to consider is if you're gonna be building one story or two. A second story or a loft would be very cool and totally doable in my cabin with the massive window wall, but my permit does not allow me to build a second story. Now, maybe I could build one down the road, but for now, I'm keeping it single story. Another question that I've been getting a lot is what are you gonna do about plumbing? Well, I'm not plumbing this structure right now. I never planned on plumbing it. I like the fact that it's one large room, open concept. So if it's just a bed or an office, it's just gonna feel really cool. And it also simplifies and makes things cheaper on my budget. If I was to do plumbing or do something in the future, I would build just a little auxiliary building either not far from it or maybe attached to it with maybe a self-composting toilet or an outhouse. If I was to do plumbing, I would need yet another permit. Wouldn't be able to do it myself more than likely, or maybe I could, I'm not sure. I think we talked about pretty much everything. Guys, if you have any questions, okay, hit me up in the comments below. So here are some great um, books that I picked up that helped me kind of determine the style. It also just gave me ideas of what I could do with my cabin. So here are some titles. Ugh. 
graphic guide to frame construction. Great pickup to help you uh, determine on you know, framing techniques, what you might be able to do, and what you might be able to avoid in terms of mistakes. If you're into timber framing, timber framing is kind of cool. It's a more traditional, old school way of building. Traditional framing now is just considered stick framing where you throw up studs with top plates, bottom plates, et cetera, et cetera. But this is using bigger beams. You're using old school uh, tools, pretty cool. So this is Learn to Timber Frame, okay? Another great book. So the first book I ever bought to give me inspiration and help dream up my cabin was this one. It's called Cabin Prawn. Okay, I'm not gonna say that last word just in case YouTube tries to get me in trouble. But this is just a fantastic book with pictures of just cabins throughout the world. And this will give you inspiration and help you dream up the look and feel of your cabin. Next up, I picked up the same title, but inside. And this book concentrates on the insides and interiors of cabins throughout the world. Again, really good pickup for inspiration on what you can do inside a cabin. Typically, cabins are a smaller footprint, so sometimes it's, it's intimidating to, you know, think of what you can do in a smaller space because we're so used to big houses, big living, American dream, baby. And so thinking about living in a smaller place or, or you know, having a livable space in a smaller footprint can be hard to overcome or think about. Another great book is this book called Tiny House. Live small, dream big. It's a nice small little coffee table book. I'll have all these links in the description below for where you can buy them. These are some pickups that I've picked up as of late, halfway through my building process. This is Micro Living, uh, 40 innovative tiny houses equipped for full-time living in 400 square feet or less. So not just cabins, but just kind of smaller living. Again, just good inspo, <laughs> inspo. And then same author, same style book, but this is Micro Shelters, 59 creative cabins, tiny houses, tree houses, and other small structures. There's some really tiny stuff in here. This is one of my favorite books because in the future on this channel, mark my words, I'm gonna build an A-frame. Uh, I had one growing up and it was just really cool. And again, it's one of those styles that seems kind of simple, definitely some complexity, complexity. I hate that word, complex. It's probably more complex than meets the eye, but the A-frame is just kind of a classic. So this book is titled The Modern A-frame. Beautiful book. Absolutely stunning A-frames that are all featured, I think in North America only. Another great book to get some inspiration. So, guys, I know I probably skipped over a lot of stuff. I missed a lot of stuff. I know that for a fact. There's a lot of different directions you could take a conversation when you're talking about a cabin. But basically I wanted to create this video to help you guys, you know, get on the right foot or start to go in a direction when it comes to building your own little space. Could be a cabin, could be a she shed. I'm hoping a video like this answers some of your questions and gives you an idea of what you guys could do on your own property or in the future. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe as we are still building my cabin. I am currently waiting on the inspection for my insulation. Actually, I also have to put insulation in the floor. So you guys will see that. Okay, we're moving along. I do have a full-time job and I'm a new father, new-ish. I have a Corona baby, so she's like seven months old. I hope you guys are all doing okay back at home. Be safe, be well, namaste. Thank you for hanging out and watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, Peace and love. Later.